Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Noah's Window. Um, this, My name is Daniel, this is Rachel. Um, we uh, were asked to be guests on here and share some things and some of our thoughts and heart with you. And so um, we thought we'd take a few episodes and just share some of our favorite scriptures um, that have meant a lot to us on our faith journey, as a family, as a couple, in ministry, verses that just um, have really meant a lot to us for a lot of different reasons and how we've tried to you know, implement them into our lives. So um, yesterday we shared Rachel's life verse, which is 1 Thessalonians 5, mm-hmm. 16 through 18. You should read it. Um, pray continuously. I'm sorry. Be joyful always. Pray continuously. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus, for those who belong to Christ Jesus. So um, anyways, you can watch that episode and we hear our thoughts on it. But um, today I want to share with you my life verse. So my original life verse as a teenager, the verse that you know meant a lot to me um, that I kept going back to when I was in high school and kind of growing in my faith was 2 Corinthians 5, 7, where Paul said, we live by faith, not by sight. And there's a lot of different reasons why that meant a lot to me. But um, over the last probably 10 to 15 years, probably, um, this verse has meant um, a lot to me um, for a lot of different reasons. But um, I just think it summarizes where I want my heart and my head to be constantly. Um, And so it's John 3.30. Uh, John 3.30 says, He must become greater, I must become less. Or he must increase, I must decrease. It was said by John the Baptist. So there was a lot that happened before John the Baptist said this. Um, You know, John is my favorite gospel for a lot of different reasons. I just think it's such a cool gospel. I love John's, like, emotion and his heart when he wrote this. Um, Not John the Baptist, but John. Um, And so uh, John the Baptist um, had had already baptized Jesus. Jesus had started his ministry, has gotten some of his first disciples, um, had changed the water into wine, um, you know, uh, had talked to Nicodemus, had said the favorite, famous verse, John 3.16, for God so loved the world. Um, And then... um, he started kind of traveling and, and going throughout the Judean countryside and talking to people and baptizing people. Um, and then that's kind of what leads up to why John said what he said. So I want to read uh, a few verses ahead. This is John three, twenty two. He says, after this, which is after Jesus had talked to Nicodemus, after Jesus had kind of basically shared the gospel with people, like for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. He did not come to the world, condemn the world, but to save the world. Um, so he's telling him, all of that. And then after that, John says this, Jesus and his disciples or yeah, the Jesus and his disciples went out into the Judean countryside where he spent some time with them and baptized. Now, John was also baptizing at Aenean near Salim because there was a plenty of water, which I think is a funny <laughs> a funny a funny note. It's lots of water. Yeah, right well, there. Plenty of water so we are baptized. <laughs> Um, and people were constantly coming to be baptized, which is cool, which I also feel like happens in New Spring. We're just constantly getting people sharing their stories, mm-hmm. which is awesome. This was before John was put in prison. Um, an argument developed, which I think is so interesting, an argument developed between some of John's disciples and a certain Jew over the matter of ceremonial washing. They came to John and said, Rabbi, that man who was with you on the other side of the Jordan, um, the one you testified about, well, he is baptizing and everyone's going to him. So it's almost like they were jealous of what was happening. And then that's why John says what he says next, which leads me to the verse. Um, to this, John replied, a man can receive only what is given to him from heaven. You yourselves can testify that I said, I am not the Christ. In other words, this isn't about me, but am sent ahead of him, which, you know, this John was kind of the forerunner for Jesus. He really kind of prepared people for when Jesus came on the scene. Um, in fact, one of my favorite things that happened was when Jesus started walking on the beach and John was baptizing people and he just said, he just stopped, you know. I imagine he was like mid-baptizing someone when he saw Jesus, <laughs> you know, walking down the beach and he just like stopped and said, look, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Like he saw Jesus immediately and then he baptized Jesus. Anyways, um, so that's kind of what he was talking about. He's like, hey, I'm, I'm not the Christ. I've been testifying about that. I'm the one that kind of, I came ahead of him. So he was a forerunner, getting people's hearts and minds ready for when Jesus would start his ministry. Anyways, verse 29, the bride belongs to the bridegroom, the friend who attends the bridegroom. So he kind of he kind of gives the example of a wedding. Um, the, the friend who attends the bridegroom waits and listens for him and is full of joy when he hears the bridegroom's voice. That joy is mine and it is now complete. He must become greater. I must become less. Um, 
So that verse means a lot to me because I sort of experienced that um, with a friend of mine when we were um, growing up. I had a, a good friend, and we had decided early on that we would be each other's best men in, in their in our weddings. And so I'm, he got married first, and I remember we went to the wedding, and I was the best man. And this is the first time I'd ever been in a wedding. And I thought this is my chance to like make his day awesome. I'm gonna be the best best man ever. And so I'm, you know, I was like trying to just pamper him the whole day, you know, like, what can I do for you, bro? And how can I help you? And, you know, as a best man, you also have to carry the rings. And so, but I was also very self-conscious. So like I had to wear a tux and I don't like wearing tuxes. Like I do not look good in a tux. I'm kind of like, I'm a, I was, well, I'm not nearly now, but I was a string bean then. Okay. I was very skinny and scrawny and I didn't like the way everything fit on me. And I went and got measured for this tux, but it didn't fit right. <laughs> Nothing fit right. And so it just felt so funky. So I was constantly in the bathroom looking in the mirror, hoping that it would like change things, you know, like trying to adjust my shirt and my tie and my jacket and my, you know, my shirt was coming way outside my jacket. My pants felt like they were too short. And anyways, it was just, a struggle. So the, the day I was supposed to be focusing on the groom, um, which is kind of what John was talking about. He's like, "Hey, I'm kind of, I'm kind of the best man in this scenario." Um, I was so focused on myself, and I remember the whole day I just like kept being frustrated with what are people going to think of me? Like anyone was going to care. No one was there. I was there. My yeah, we weren't married before, yet, but before. she was there. So I was trying to he look good to look for her, good, so, you know. but no one was going to be looking at me. <laughs> of course, it's a wedding. No one cares about the best man. <laughs> Um, but I remember like five minutes before the wedding started, I, um, went into the bathroom one more time <laughs> just to sure things up, make sure every hair was in place and every button was buttoned. Um, and, uh, that my tie looked good. And I remember I had had the rings in my pocket and we were like running around the church all day, you know, trying to, because the girls took way longer to get ready than the guys. So we were bored and hungry. <laughs> um, and so I'd had the rings in my pocket like the whole day. And I remember, like, right before we were supposed to line up and the ceremony was going to start, I reached my hand in my pocket and the rings weren't there. And I panicked a little bit because I was like, why is this happening to me? Like, I fe it felt like a movie where I was like, I'm the best man and I just like, lost the panic. rings. I freaked out. Um, and so I was like, where are they? Well, I ran outside the bathroom and I sat down on a bench in, uh, outside there. And they had fallen out of my tux pocket when I sat down, which is another reason why I don't like tuxes because nothing <laughs> stays in your pockets. Um, and I found them underneath the bench, you know, thank goodness. And so I grabbed them. I put them on my finger, made a fist, and then put my hand in my pocket. Um, and I was like, I'm not going to drop these again. <laughs> um, and then as we were lining up, one of the other grooms was like, you have the rings, right? And I'm like, of course I have the rings. Why would I not have the rings? I've had the rings the whole time. I'm the best man. Um, but I panicked because I was like, I almost ruined this whole day because I was thinking about me. Um, and so, you know, later I told the bride and groom that and they freaked out a little bit. <laughs> like, I can't believe that happened. But the whole point is this, is that as the best man, we I had a job to elevate the, the groom and the bride and make it their day. But instead, I almost ruined a really special moment, a really special ceremony, a, an important moment, because I was thinking about myself. Um, and I think that's kind of what John was sort of getting at. He was like, hey, guys, I've been telling you this whole time, like, this isn't about me and I'm not the Christ. I'm here to help prepare the way for him. Um, the fact that Jesus is baptizing, the, he's the one this is all about and he's going to change the world. And um, I think he was just trying to get them their focus off of, hey, like whatever you thought this was about beforehand you had the wrong idea because it's not about, it's about Jesus. It's about the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So that's why this verse means a lot for me because it's so easy to focus on ourselves. Even with this verse, Rachel was reading a devotional not that long ago. It's easy to think about this verse. He must increase and I must decrease or he must yeah. become greater and I must become less. And it's easy for us to even focus on the second part of that verse, right? Yeah. Where it's like, oh, I got to think about how I become less, right? I need to become less, I can become less, which isn't necessarily a bad mindset, but you're still thinking about you. Yeah, you're thinking about, oh, how do I decrease and how do I become less instead of thinking about Christ and yeah. how we can increase yeah. or make him greater. We're thinking, yeah. of, we're still thinking about ourselves. We're still thinking about us. Like, and then we're like, it's not about us. Yeah, and sometimes <laughs> I am really good at false humility, which I'm like, oh, I'm not worthy, but I'm still thinking, <laughs> I'm still talking about me. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. 
like, like get mm, your focus off me. Talk about me. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, that's that's why this verse means a lot for me. Um, and we try to remember that, you know, like he must become greater, mm-hmm. like in everything. You know, you, you could almost forget about that. I must become less because that's a given. Right. If we're following yeah. Jesus, we've surrendered our life to him so that we can live for him. And so let's just focus on him. Let's focus on him becoming greater in our marriages, focus on him become greater in the way we parent, focus on him become greater in the way we talk about uh, talk about him amongst family, yeah. be greater in our attitudes, greater in our giving, greater in our everything. He must become greater um, so that we, and by default, we will become less of Jesus becoming greater. So. Um, let's focus on that. Let's be, let's make Jesus greater. Um, because that's why we do what we do. That's, that's the reason, um, we've all been saved is because of what Jesus has done for us. That deserves to be elevated above everything. So anyways, that's my favorite verse, John 330. Hope that that made sense to you guys. Um, yeah. Can we pray for you? You want to pray for them real quick? Sure. And then, uh, we'll close out. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for everyone watching today, Lord, and I just pray that you'll just be a blessing to them and um, just uh, help them to remember to just um, put them put aside themselves and just to make you greater in their lives. And I just thank you for all that you do for us, and you're just an amazing God, and we love you. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. Bye.